Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another World of Warcraft Classic Guide. My name is Cargos and today I'd like to share with you this comprehensive druid leveling guide for World of Warcraft 1.12. I'm going to start off just by sharing my general impressions of druid leveling, talk about the pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses, then we're going to move into quality of life and rotation at the different leveling brackets, so 1 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, so on and so forth. Then we're going to move into talent builds. Uh, because druids are a hybrid class, there are a ton of options on the table for you, and what you choose is going to depend on kind of your goals in the game, whether you want to maybe do a little more healing on the way to 60, or if you're just trying to, uh, you know, speed level as hyper-efficiently as possible. I've also included some noteworthy uh, pieces of gear you might want to keep consider uh, as you level. Druids overall are very gear independent, but it's stuff that you might want to keep in mind. We're going to go over tips and tricks, um, lots of really interesting stuff in this one, so let's get going. Uh, I gotta quickly shout out the people that help make this guide possible. Um, for those of you who don't know, druids are one of the most underrepresented and underestimated classes in the game. They are subject to a lot of stigma. The whole, you know, jack of all trades, master of none comes to mind. Also the whole hybrid tax. Um, they're made to feel like they're not viable. and. People have rallied around this underdog mentality, and there's a lot of really passionate druid enthusiasts in the community. People like Mobia, Scylla, Skepticon, Unusual, Keftank, Tailspinner, Serendipities, Taladrill, and of course Shado. And these, some of the, these people that you're seeing right here were invaluable to helping create this guide. Uh, the whole, you know, druid classic Discord was really fantastic, and um, you know, these are people that you know, actually crunch the numbers and try and push druids to the absolute maximum potential. And uh, they've really come up with some um, some really valuable information. So let's get started. Uh, class overview. I'm going to read this little thing that I wrote for you. So druids are hyper-efficient tier 1 levelers with low gear dependence and the highest movement speed in the game. Druids have excellent starting area progression in a fresh realm environment due to the reduced congestion of both Mulgore and Teldrassil. At level 10, druids get a big power spike through bear form, allowing them to kill faster and with higher sustain. Druids get cat form at level 20, and soon after, 2 out of 2 improved cat form, or uh, feline swiftness is the, uh, is the actual name, uh, giving them an astounding 30% static movement speed increase when outdoors. This speed is incredibly valuable early on, and when paired with the ability to self-heal and prowl and go into bear form when necessary, it just offers druids so many advantages that no other class have. Druids are capable of competently performing as a tank, DPS, or healer throughout the entirety of the leveling process. Bear tanks have easy, on-demand, high AoE threat in the form of swipe, and also a threat table that's multiplicative as opposed to additive like a warrior. Uh, cat DPS is quite strong uh, during the leveling stages, you know, gear independent. Uh, they offer great group utility in the form of a combat res, uh, off heals, off tanking, um, and so on and so forth. As healers, druids are best utilized alongside another member of the party that can freely resurrect, as they are restricted to a a resurrection on a cooldown called rebirth. It's, it's the combat res that requires a reagent. Um, so you can't just res whenever you want, which is which is kind of a bummer. But you know, if you're paired alongside maybe a paladin or a shaman that can resurrect, druids are fantastic dungeon healers. Um, so let's move on to the pros and cons. So tier one leveling speed. The reason why they're tier one and they're right up there with hunters are due to a couple different reasons. Um, and we've seen this, you know, we've seen this through all through some of the private servers in the past, how, how fast druids can level. You know, we've seen druids uh, four days played and, and you know, even, even server firsting, beating out hunters, server first druids. It's a very real thing. So not only do they have the highest movement speed in the game and it comes online really early, they have that really good starting area progression. You know, everybody is, you know, running around like headless chickens in the Valley of Trials and Elwyn Forest. They're able to get ahead of the pack starting at, you know, starting on pre-level 10. And then their movement speed comes online so early with the cats with the with the uh, feline swiftness that they're able to con continue that snowball. And if you really know what you're doing when it comes to questing, this movement speed is going to translate into a lot of value. And uh, the other main thing is that they're gear independent. So weapons for druids are just stat sticks. The top end, the damage range, the DPS, it doesn't really matter for druids because you have these animal forms and your damage is going to be um, you know based on your animal form. So. You know, this is this is very different from classes like rogues, paladins, shamans, warriors. These uh, 
melee classes that it's a big priority for them to keep their we their weapon relevant. And while war warriors are trying to find groups to go get their whirlwind axe, or rogues are trying to get cruel barb, or or whatever these classes are doing, druids are just going. They're going, they're going, they're going with high movement speed and no downtime. And the other aspect of why they have no downtime, which we'll talk more about in a second, is your mana continues to regenerate while you're in animal form, even though you're using animal form abilities. And the reason is you're using either energy-based abilities in cat form or rage-based abilities in bear form. So we'll talk about the, the, the flow of combat, but you know, because your mana is regenerating and you still get to use abilities, you, you're, you're just able to continue the uh, infinite value loop and heal yourself, go back to animal form. But we'll talk about in, that in a second. So amazing questers, low gear dependence, high sustain, strong self-healing, decent crowd control, can tank DPS or heal, can stealth. The uh, different forms and skills you have offer a very fun, rewarding, dynamic gameplay. Um, hard to kill out in open world PvP. Druids are the de facto flag carriers in Warsong Gulch. They're very hard to lock down and kill. The cons is they have a slowish start from 1 to 10. Uh, media, the, the kill speed single target tends to slow down in the, in the, in the, I think it slows down for pretty much every class though, but, um, I definitely felt it more on a druid. Uh, and the subpar grinding efficiency, I, not, this is not to say that druids are by any means, uh, bad at grinding. They have the, they, they can really sustain indefinitely, but if I were to compare druids to the other kind of tier one, tier two levelers, when it comes to pure grinding efficiency, they are going to fall behind. So, you know, warlocks, you're able to juggle three, four, three, four mobs at the same time, dot and stuff, you know, making your pet transition to the next target, um, you know, just you know, being really proactive and lining up your next kill before the first one's even dead. And druids are still very much single target killers. Same thing with hunters. So if I had to, you know, grind for three hours straight, a warlock or a hunter is going to pull ahead of a druid and even a mage with AOE grinding. So, but druids, when it comes to questing, badass. All right, so no regular resurrection. General leveling tips, I'm not going to talk about this so much. I got some feedback that this is kind of boring. I talk about this in every class leveling guide. Um, th there is a link to the presentation down in the description below and pinned in the comments, so feel free to come in here and take a look at this type of stuff. Um, the only one I guess I'll talk about is push the limits of your combat efficiency. This is going to be very important with druids um, because you're going to have to manage your health and mana, and you're going to have stuff like power shifting, and you're going to... We'll talk about it in a second, but... Um, yeah, take a look at these general leveling tips, leveling speed equation, you know, your leveling speed is going to be the sum total of your in combat time, out of combat time, travel time, so view all three of these equally. Um, okay, so druid combat, let me kind of just go through the general flow of druid combat. So you're in caster form, you know, you buffed yourself up and you want to you want to kill some mobs efficiently, right? So the first thing you do is you spend your mana in a burst, you know, front loading your, your spells, you know, instead of staggering them out, and you're going to spend your mana on something productive. Now that could be, you know, direct damage in the form of a wrath followed by a moonfire or something like that that could be rolling a couple hots on yourself like using regrowth and rejuvenation that could just be rebuffing yourself if your thorns is about to fall off spend your mana um, so that when you swap into animal form you're going to continue to get value from your mana regeneration um, and it's not just gonna, you're not going to be sitting at full full resources right so you're, if if these add-ons are available to you come classic it's pretty mandatory to get druid bar Druid bar, or I think Luna has a way to track it. There's a couple of the different frame type things that allow you to track your caster form mana, even while you're in a shapeshifted animal form. Now, so you're going to spend your mana, and let's say you you, you, you spent your mana, and you're at like 65% mana, right? Then you pop in a cat form or bear form, and you start engaging targets. You're going to kill maybe two, three, and then your mana is going to be approaching 100%, 100% again. Now, you don't want to be sitting there with 100% resources, right? So at this point, um, even if you're not low, it's ideal to pop back out to caster form and then again spend that mana on something productive translated into more aggressive damage on the next mob or healing yourself or whatever and you're going to kind of rinse and repeat so you're just shifting in and out of animal forms um, keeping that infinite value loop going so we talked about the highest movement speed in the game with druids right you have travel form you have a uh, cat form with uh, feline swiftness so that's you know a 30 percent increased movement speed in one form 40 percent in another one and then at level 40, you get Apprentice Riding. This is the um, this is where you get your 60% speed mount. So when is it going to be more efficient to ride your 60% mount to your next objective versus using Travel Form or Cat Form? Now, this is something that, you know, is interesting, you know, because you're dealing with, you know, 30% versus 60%, 40% versus 60%. The answer might surprise you. 
So there's a three second cast time when you decide to mount up, right? And then you get the increased movement speed. So if you plan to ride for 20 seconds, 21 seconds or longer upon finishing your three second mounted cast time, you should you should use your mount. But that's a long time, guys. That's a long time. So it's a 20, it's basically 24 seconds total. If you're gonna travel somewhere and it's likely gonna take less than 24 seconds, like 15 seconds or something, it's actually more optimal to go from point A to point B in travel form. And then the breaking point is a bit lower with CAT, but uh, it's it's interesting to uh, think about. And those, those, those values are courtesy of Mobia and the Druid Classic Discord. Very smart guy. All right, Druid specific tips. I'm not gonna go through all of these, just a couple pages of them, but one that I'm gonna point out is Teleport Moonglade. So mages, um, contrary to many people's opinion, uh, aren't the only ones that can teleport in Classic WoW. Druids actually have a spell called Teleport Moonglade. You get it very early on, and it is really, really such a nice amenity to have. Now, it allows you to, it, it kind of offers you a second hearthstone. So what you can do as a druid is when you're out leveling, you can set your hearthstone to wherever you're leveling at. Let's say you're in Stone Talon, you want to set it at that lodge. And then when you need to go back to a major city to go to a profession trainer or visit the auction house or train some skills, you can use Teleport Moonglade, train all your druid skills in Moonglade, and then fly to Thunder Bluff or whatever, and, uh, and then visit that, uh, visit whoever you need to visit, and then, you know, then you're good to go. So that's, that's really going to be valuable for you. And another reason why druids can level so fast. Um, so we talked about the mana regen and cat form. So shifting into a form counts as a spell, which will affect your mana regeneration, where shifting out does not. Uh, be sure to save any uh, pieces with intellect or spirit. It could be cloth. It could be whatever as you're leveling, because it's always hand it's always nice to have a healing set handy. Also, you know, this is more so the case with other classes that struggle with sustain, but swapping back and forth into a uh, spirit set can uh, help boost that out of combat time. Um, let's see. Yep, that's pretty much it for the Druid specific tip. So useful add-ons, Druid bar, that's what it looks like. Um, that blue bar up at the top left, it's kind of a movable little mana bar that keeps track of your current mana. Um, then if you look down below, there's an energy tracker. This is going to be important. Rogues use this, uh, you know, Ferals use this. It's, you know, energy ticks every two seconds, right? So knowing when your resources are going to regenerate is going to be valuable for you. Even stuff like getting value out of Tiger's Fury, you generally want to use it right before an energy tick. Um, it's very it's very valuable to track this information. Also, XP per hour tracker. You can track you know your XP per minute, XP per hour, average XP per kill. Insights like that are pretty useful. And uh, Outfitter to uh, swap back and forth gear pieces. All right, so life pre level ten is uh, is kind of mediocre. Sorry, let me take a sip of this coffee. It's nothing to um, write home to mom about. So you know it's uh. You're gonna you're 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 gonna front load some spells. It's gonna be you're gonna cast wraths pretty much until the mob closes the distance with you, and then you can do a little trick here that will help squeeze out a little bit more damage. You can melee the mob once it's up in your melee hitbox, melee it, and as soon as your swing timer completes and the animation connects, you can instantly cast an instant cast, so moonfire or rejuve, and this will only this will only delay your next your next auto attack by like 0.1 or 0.2 seconds. So it's really going going to um, you know n not really have any downside at all. So you're squeezing in an ability between the cooldown and your and your attack timer, and then you're gonna just proceed to uh, melee the mob to death with your staff or whatever, and uh, get some mana regeneration going again via the five second. Um, five second rule. The multi target rotation. One thing that might happen to you as you're out in the open world is. Let's say you're in Mulgore, right? And you got to go in that cave and kill those Venture guys, the Venture Co guys. They're, they can be, there's pretty high mob density there, right? So you may pull too many mobs. And the ultimate, like, maximum DPM, damage per mana thing you can do to attrition out mobs and survive through that engagement is going to be to convert all your mana into heals and let uh, thorns, <laughs> your reflect damage with thorns, kill stuff in addition to your melee attacks. So what you're going to do is if you have two, three mobs on you, you're going to spend your mana in bursts, you know, to heal yourself. You're going to wait till you get a little bit low, heal yourself, get sufficient value out of your heals, and then proceed to melee the mobs down, trying to get a few more ticks maybe after the five seconds of your mana regeneration, and then rinse and repeat. And uh, that's like the most efficient way to attrition out a mob. Now, if you're pulling two targets at once, one thing you can do is you can just cast that Entangling Roots on one. There's no diminishing returns on Entangling Roots out on mobs in the open world. So they're going to be rooted in place. The second one will probably start headed to you. Start heading to you. You can cast a Wrath and do the whole uh, melee Moonfire trick. Um, 
so you guys get the picture. So then at level 10, you're going to get access to your bear form quest. Now, I've included two slides here, one for alliance bear form quest and one for horde bear form quest. The, uh, the main thing I'd like to point out is that after you pick up the quest from Cal the Druid Trainer in Dolinar or Genia Rune Totem, um, go to Thunder Bluff or Darnassus and set your Hearthstone there because they're going to make you go to Moonglade, talk to this guy Dendre, you're going to talk to the Great Bear Spirit, and then you're going to have to go back to TB or Darnassus, and uh, you'll, if you didn't set your hearth there, you're, gonna, you're in for a long flight. So make sure to do that. Hearth back, they'll send you to go kill a Moonkin. Uh, the Moonkin Luna Claw, don't underestimate this thing. Don't just be like AF, sort of AFK alt tab or something and just kind of leveling, you know, you know with, with a few brain cells kind of turn it on for a second and realize that you can die and if you die it can potentially despawn uh you may have to get the, the the thing to summon it again it could be a real nightmare so bring out your a game try to uh you know cast entangling roots and get as much value as you can out of your out of your abilities at range um and then once it does close that distance you know manage your mana and, and be able to heal yourself up but you know you should be fine but just don't 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 sleep on that quest all right so 10 to 20 you're gonna have bear form you're gonna get a nice power spike it's a real juicy power spike because now you're able to start you know that infinite value loop with uh mana regeneration while you're in an animal form and you're still using uh bear abilities so the single target rotation is going to look like this you're going to front load chunk of mana like we said a couple spells that could be you know wrath moonfire or uh, a Wrath Rejuve, whatever is going to best fit the circumstances. Then you're going to pop into Bear Form. If it's single target, you can use Enrage. It's going to reduce your armor by uh, 27%, but it's going to help you generate Rage. And then you're just going to proceed to Maul down the target. Now, multi-target, it's not going to be worth it to get that 27 base armor reduction, 27%. So I'd forego using Enrage and instead use Demoralizing Roar. Um, again, you probably just want to dump all your stuff into, into Maul. Uh, Maul is going to be the most efficient use of your rage, but uh, there will be situations where Demo Roar will be uh, will be useful to, it, to you. So make sure you keep, you know, buff to Mark of the Wild and Thorns, and then you can interrupt. You get Bash at this level stage, so you can uh, interrupt casters with Bash. All right, so 20 to 31, you're going to get Cat Form at level 20. Um, but this is one thing I want to point out. On one of my Druids I leveled recently, I, you get to 20, right? And you think, like, wow, I get this new sexy form. It's got to be more optimal to just you know, stay in cat form, right? It's got to be more optimal. You know, it's going to be doing more damage, you know, but there are a lot of reasons why bear is going to be superior to cat form before you get uh, certain tools online, before you get stuff like rake, before you get stuff like um, shred, uh, furor comes online. And the, the real thing is this, because when you swap into cat form, you have zero energy and it's not like a bear, you know, you have zero rage, but that's not really a downside. That's how just the nature of rage. Uh, you're not going to be able to front load your spells or front load, you know, front load damage or front load healing as well. Whereas opposed to a bear, no downside. You throw a couple spells on the target, pop into bear, you're good to go. So, um, yeah, I, I generally stick in bear to like 22 and then shred comes online. We're going to talk about front shredding. I know you guys are going to hate me for this, but I'm going to include multiple ways to level. So if front shredding is not a thing in classic, there are going to be many other options on the table for you. Um, so once you get rake at 24, you're going to start off by raking and then clawing stuff to death or front shredding, um, if that's a thing. Uh, and then the multi-target rotation is a bit similar. On longer fights, you can go ahead and use rip. This is going to be a bit longer bleed. The thing about bleeds is they bypass armor, right? So they're kind of like pure damage. You can use them on, uh, they really shine on high armor targets. So it's something you want to keep in mind. And then if you have excess energy, it's not really that useful on the first um, on the first mob to use Tiger's Fury because uh, you will be front loading some spells or something like that. But let's say you kill target one, you're transitioning to target two, and you have excess energy, energy right? And your energy tick is about to about to hit. You might as well use Tiger Fury and get the uh, get the damage buff. It's a six second buff, and then you know there's really no downside to it. So that's how you use Tiger's Fury. Uh, you get dash, you can use that on cooldown when you know you're going to get full value from it. And you get travel form at 30. So, let's see. So, you can get 5 out of 5 Fuhrer at, uh, at level 27. So, Fuhrer is really good. We'll talk about it in the town, so I don't want to talk about it right now. So, 32 to 60, you're going to get Ferocious Bite at 32. This is going to be... One of the first things, one of the first finishers that you're going to be start that you're going to use on the average, you know, 15 second encounter with a mob. It's going to be able to translate your uh, your combo points just into direct damage. There's a couple different considerations with Ferocious Bite, though. One thing is that it drains all your energy. 
Okay, it's not like a static flat energy cost. It will drain all of your energy and convert uh, further energy into more damage. But the general rule with Ferocious Bite is you use it only at five combo points and you use it when you have low energy. So for whatever reason, you have five combo points on a target and maybe it's PvP and the target, you know, get some distance between you and the target and, it, and, you, and then you run up to it again you have full energy don't ferocious bite dump a few more claws or shreds into it before you ferocious bite so 32 to 60 you're also going to have access to feral fairy fire this is a it's a pretty significant damage increase you're able to use it in your animal form so you're going to pull with feral fairy fire walk up engage a target with rake then a couple claws or shreds and then uh, ferocious bite it down at five combo points uh, let's see here So you get Pounce at 36, offering you a 2-second stun lock opener in PvP. It's kind of a PvP consideration. You also have Fer Feral Charge at this in this uh, in this situation. And then Feral Charge is an interesting thing. So Feral Charge isn't like Warrior Charge, where you can just charge out of combat and it generates rage. It costs rage in order to use Feral Charge. And it really only starts to shine, in, in my opinion, once you get Fuhrer. And Fuhrer is going to generate you rage or energy as soon as you swap into that form. And it's going to kind of be like a little bit of an energy battery where you can convert mana into rage or energy kind of on demand. And that's that's come, that's speaking towards power shifting, which we can talk about in a little bit. All right, so we're going to talk about talent builds now. So this first build I'm going to share with you guys is uh, sort of my take on an optimal leveling build. It's going to bring your tools like Fuhrer and Nature's Grasp online in, the, uh, in a really good timing window. Um, as well as like feral charge and it's not going to have you have to respec at some point so this is going this is this is not a front shredding build this is going to be good for players of all skill levels new druid players old druid players it will 100 percent work uh, on the classic server so we're going to start off with five points into ferocity these are your bread and butter abilities uh, no surprise here and then the second tier is going to be the first point of contestion so some druids advocate for feral instinct this is going to reduce the chance enemies have to detect you while prowling as you guys know stealth is kind of weak early on and uh, this will help you if you have that kind of more ninja play style um, i personally don't have that play style i like to go for pure grinding efficiency so <clears throat> it's not something that i that i take uh, brutal impact is not one of my favorites i very rarely use brutal impact um just for interrupts and stuff so thick hide uh could potentially offer more value really early than feral aggression because you, you are getting some sort of marginal benefit from the increased armor on every mob you're going to fight but i like to go with feral aggression here mainly because it's an investment for for when ferocious bite comes online at 32 where you get that 15 percent increased damage and i also sit in bear form longer than most druids probably do i, I pretty much am primarily in bear form until fear comes online so this is going to give your demoralizing roar uh, an additional 40 percent attack power reduction so then where all druids kind of come together is the agreement that feline swiftness is the first thing you really want to beeline down to, increasing the movement speed by a static 30% while outdoors is just, is just what, what can I say, it's just really, really good. Um, then at this point, we are actually going to transition into restoration and put five points into fury. Some druids like to advocate and go for nature's grasp first. This is a good PvP tool. It's going to save you and be really relevant in PvP. But uh, in my in my view, you're not going to be in these contested areas uh, so much at this stage. You may have some ganking going on in Stone Talon, but it's not going to be something like Stranglethorn or something. So I like to get fury going ASAP. Once fury comes online, I, I start to use cat form a lot more. <clears throat> You're also sort of able to pseudo power, power shift at this stage, uh, turning you know your mana into on-demand energy. So after five out of five fear, I put one point to nature's grasp. You're level 27 now. It's kind of slightly of more of an appropriate range to have this PvP tool at your disposal. And then we're then we're gonna go into sharpened claws three out of three, followed by one into feral charge, and then we're gonna go two out of two blood frenzy three out of three or oh, two two into predatory strikes opening up feral fairy fire so we're going to rush down to feral fairy fire get this this is an amazing dps increase you can use this ability while in animal forms really really good stuff and then after feral fairy fire we're going to go two into savage fury one more into predatory strikes we're going to put one into brutal impact because why not it's just increasing the the stun duration of your bash and pounce abilities by 0.5 um, since this is not a front shredding build, there's not, it's not going to be as valuable to get something like an improved shred. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five into heart of the wild into leader of the pack. 
So after leader of the pack, we're going to proceed into the balance tree, put four points into improved nature's grasp. I'm going to put five points into natural weapons, increasing the damage you deal with physical attacks in all forms by 10%, and then picking omen of clarity. And then our final three points is going to go into three out of three natural shapeshifter, reducing the mana cost of all shapeshifting by 30%. So this is, uh, you know, and then the last point is kind of inconsequential, right? Because we're going to be uh, respecking at 60. So I'm now going to include a front shredding build here. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to hate this, and I got a lot of flack for including the front stabbing on the rogue guide. But if this is a thing in classic on the official servers, then this is absolutely going to be the fastest, most efficient path to 60. So you, I might as well include it. We're going to have multiple talent builds on the table for you here. Um, so if this is not a thing, then you can just, you know, happily ignore this section and just choose one of the other builds. So what is front shredding? Front shredding refers to a clever manipulation of game mechanics which allow you to use shred from the front. Now shred is a ability that you get at 22 and uh, it incre it does 225% damage plus 54 to the target, target at rank 1. That is a colossal amount of damage, but it requires you to be behind the target. So in order to front, to front, shred, it's front shred, it's pretty simple. You want to get right on top of the mob, as close as you can in his hitbox as possible. Uh, if you get too close, it will back up on you, so you know you've gone too far. So you get as close as you can, basically hover right on top of it, and then you're going to begin a tight strafing pattern back and forth, left and right, using A, A and D, or whatever is comfortable for you. And then you're going to bind shred to something easily spammable. I highly recommend scroll up or scroll down on the mouse wheel. That, when, that way, when you scroll up or down, you're effectively hitting that bind like a freaking hundred times or something like that. So while you're strafing back and forth, the mob will kind of glitch out and look like it's turning direction slightly and you will have opportunities the skill will light up and will allow you to to use the ability as you're strafing back and forth really fast so it's a bit more apm intensive to do it this way but you get a massive damage uh, damage boost as you can see so you're going to stack this is your rotation if you are front shredding you're going to stack up uh, shreds to five and then you're going to dump with ferocious bite and ferocious bite costs significantly less it's like 35 energy so um that makes it kind of worth it to use it on that so we're going to talk about Serendipity's front sh front shred speed leveling build. This guy is a legendary druid speed leveler. He has a track record of success. You know, leveling on all the uh, on some of these past servers over the years. Uh, I think his fastest time was four days, eight hours on a druid. Um, and he shared a very very interesting build I had never seen or considered before uh, with us as a group uh, yesterday. So uh, before we get into the talent calculator, I want to just overview the kind of broad game plan so from 10 to 19 you are going to start in balance as crazy as that seems but the reason why you're going to start in balance is the course assumption that the five out of five uh, natural weapons which will give you a static 10 percent damage increase is going to be more val valuable than anything that the early feral talents are going to offer you and i think it's a fair assumption to make you know it's going to be more valuable than the the rage reduction in maul that's really the only value you're going to get out of it at this stage um or the attack power reduction in the moralizing roar so <clears throat> that's kind of a fair assumption to make and then you're going to respec at 20. so we're, i'm going to show you what the respec looks like and then we're going to proceed in the talent calculator so from 10 to 19 you're going to go you know one into nature's grasp four into improved nature's grasp and then five into natural weapons it's going to bring you to level 19. so at 20 you're going to respec and it's going to look something like this the uh, order of operations doesn't matter so much because we are respecing it's going to be five into ferocity and then five into thick hide and one into feline swiftness so this is your level 20 point we're going to proceed through the tree like this you're going to put one more point into feline swiftness and then we're going to go uh three into sharpened claws then we're going to go two into improved shred this is really important to just beeline it down to improve shred as fast as possible since we're using this every global and then after improved shred we're going to go three into predatory strikes opening up fer feral fairy fire at level 30. now at this point the next assumption we're going to make is that these other talents aren't going to be that helpful if we are, are if we are doing a front shredding build, increasing the damage caused by your claw, rake, maul swipe. You're not using these if you're front shredding, you know? You're not really, you know, Blood Frenzy is not going to benefit you that much. Primal Fury is kind of a non-factor, brutal impact, you know, what, what is this stuff really going to do for you if you're just shredding all the time? So at this point, we're actually going to proceed back into the balance tree and beeline it down to natural weapons and omen of clarity, which really shines with shred. So we're going to go 
uh, one into nature's grasp, four into improved nature's grasp, uh, five into natural weapons, and one into omen of clarity. Now at this point, we're going to transition into the restoration tree and we're gonna start to bring on our power shifting package online. And it's going to be five points into Fuhrer, followed by three points into natural shapeshifter, which have a lot of synergy with each other. So, you know, you have Fuhrer, which is gonna give you that 100% chance to gain 10 rage or 40 energy when you shift into animal form. And you have something that's reducing the mana cost of your shapeshifting by 30%. So it's gonna make it, you know, a better equation with your DPE and DPM to 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 power shift. The power shifting is going to become stronger with this online. So at this point, we're going to proceed back into the Feral Combat Tree. We're going to go two points into Savage Fury. We're going to go two points into Blood Frenzy. We're going to go five points into Heart of the Wild uh, and one point to Leader of the Pack. And the last point is going to be kind of inconsequential, as we said before, as we're going to respec at 60 regardless. So we're back to the fun power point now. Uh, one of the key takeaways here is that no matter what spec you're going to go, if you really want to kind of min-max out the leveling speed from 10 to 19, I'm sort of aligned with Serendipities and going balance and then respecing at 20. Now that's not going to, you know, whatever this this is going to apply to whatever direction you want to go. If you want to get a slightly higher speed from 10 to 19, I probably would agree with him in going balance. All right, so now we're the next spec we're going to talk about is Taladril's Feral Balance spec. This is going to be pretty similar to the spec that uh, that I shared. I'm not going to go through the talent calculator on all these builds because there are a bunch of them to share, but I'm going to point out some of the core differences. So basically, instead of going Feral Aggression, which is going to reduce that uh, Demoralizing Roar AP, or increase the, the reduction rather, and that first spite investment, he goes right into five five out of five feral instinct after five out of five ferocity. That's going to give you a better better stealth and allow you to have that more ninja type playstyle. Then he goes nature's grasp, uh, followed by Fuhrer. So I, I go Fuhrer into nature's grasp. So that's another core difference. Um, and then it is it is pretty straightforward. The other the other difference is that instead of going for natural shapeshifter towards the very tail end of the leveling experience, he goes into three out of three improved thorns, which is a line of reasoning I definitely can understand because it's just going to be more damage. You're going to get consistent value out of improved thorns because um, uh, he, he his impression was that you don't really have too many mana issues as a druid um, if you're playing correctly. So that's the difference with Taladril's Feral Balance compared to compared to mine, and then uh, Shado's Feral Balance. This one I'm not going to go through as well, but I'll point out some of the noteworthy aspects. So he goes one out of one Nature's Grasp first, his very first talent points. So he actually delays the uh, Feral the the um, the Feline Swiftness a little bit by a level, and then he goes right into Feral Combat, five out of five Ferocity, two into Brutal Impact. As I was saying, some Druids do like the Brutal Impact, increasing that stun duration. Three out of five Feral Instinct. So again, another Druid that doesn't uh, agree with going Feral Aggression. Uh, then two out of two Feline Swiftness and into Feral Charge. Then he goes Fuhrer, um, goes back into the Feral Tree, goes back into the Feral Tree, proceeds all the way down to Leader of the Pack, and then goes into Balance uh, at the end. So the final build I'm going to share with you guys is something that I, I think will appeal to a lot of people. It's a non-front shredding build, and it's going to be uh, better for people that that plan to heal and do more, you know, healing, heal, play more of a healing role when it comes to leveling and doing maybe more dungeons and stuff like this. And uh, some of the key differences is that you are going to have access to a nature swiftness, which is going to really sort of increase your healing potential. You're going to get really core healing talents like reflection, improved healing touch. Um, so we're going to pop over to the talent calculator and go through it. This is called Feral into NS Resto. So we're going to start off pretty similar uh, to some of the other builds, 5 into Ferocity, 5 into Feral Aggression, uh, beelining it right down to Feline Swiftness. Now at this point we're going to go pick up one point in Nature's Grasp because just one point, you're bringing this build, you're bringing this, um, this ability online, definitely going to be worth the one point, followed by 5 into Fear and Restoration, and then we're going to bounce back to Feral Combat, pick up Feral Charge, go 3 into Sharpened Claws, 2 into Blood Frenzy, 2 into Predatory Strikes, picking up Feral, feral Fairy Fire at level 36. Then we're going to go 2 points into Savage Fury. One more point into Predatory Strikes, and we're going to go into Restoration at this point. We're going to do Improved Healing Touch, reducing the cast time of your Healing Touch spell by 0.5 seconds, followed by Reflection. This is another bread and butter healing talent, allowing 15% of your mana regeneration to continue while casting. Now, at this point, you have some options on the table. You can choose uh, Improved Enrage, which will give you instant, uh, some instant, 10 instant rage when fully ranked out in your bear form. You will still be leveling and using bear form, so this is definitely a worthy consideration. This is where, I'm pro where I would probably put the points, but you could also consider maybe improve Mark of the Wild or or, uh, or reducing your threat generation as well. That's actually pretty decent. Now at this point, we're going to go five into Tranquil Spirit and right into Nature Swiftness. If you don't know what Nature Swiftness does, basically it's going to give you an on-demand burst heal. You activate it and then your next Nature spell will become an instant cast. Uh, so after Nature Swiftness, we can either go back into the Feral Tree 
right? Or we can get some more talents in restoration. We can get improved rejuve. Um, maybe we can finish out the threat generation. It's really just going to depend on you and what, what you decide to do. I would personally go back into feral combat at this point. So now that we're back here, uh, we would go one into in brutal impact, opening up the last four points to be invested into uh, Heart of the Wild. So that's going to be it for uh, the Feral NS Resto build. Now let's get into leveling stat priorities. So when you're out in the open world questing and doing dungeons and you're picking up pieces of gear left and right, what stats do you want to go for? Now, I came full circle with this. When I originally played my first druid uh, ever, I thought, you know, you're, you're, you're a feral druid, right? You're, you have used energy, you probably want agility. It's probably going to be the best thing uh, possible. You're like a rogue, right? So I started off prioritizing agility, and then the next stage of my thought process was when I realized that, wow, druids actually gain two points of attack power per, per one point of strength. Strength has got to be the best, right? we got to stack strength. Um, and then recently I spoke with Shado, he is really the king of cat DPS. You may have seen his videos of him topping you know, the meters in BWL, and he really just understands the class thoroughly inside and out. He was he was sharing his insights, and it really made a lot of sense to me. So I've kind of come full circle, and he's, he was explaining why he thinks agility is better than strength as far as a stat to prioritize while leveling. And here's the, this little passage I'd like to read. So, while stacking strength at first glance might seem better than agility, at low levels, the AP gain from stats doesn't translate very well into faster kill speed. The AP power curve is linear, requiring substantial amounts of AP to go from, let's say, 12 hits to kill a mob to 11 hits. So it's sort of that stair-step power curve. You know, the, the the linear power curve doesn't really translate that well because it, because a 15-second fight is going to have more of a stair-step power curve. I hope that makes sense. So at least by stacking crit, you can sometimes get lucky and get the occasional high tempo burst damage, um, which would potentially excel in these shorter fights. So crit also becomes more, significantly more valuable once the blood frenzy talent comes online. That is the talent in the feral in the feral tree, where when you crit in cat form, you will get a uh, additional combo point. So druids get uh, two AP per point of strength. You know, 14 AP is equivalent to seven strength, which is equivalent to uh, 14 agility, which equals one DPS. But then, of course, agility adds a crit and dodge as well. 20 agi is equivalent to 1% crit and 1% dodge. Um, so, yeah, so it's going to be agility is your number one priority, followed by strength, followed by stamina. Stamina is sort of equal to intellect in some ways. So you can kind of view them equally, just have a good balance between stamina and, and intellect. And then uh, spirit. So spirit doesn't isn't really as beneficial on classes that can self heal and druids like you know they have that infinite value loop so it's not going to be all that important for them but like we said before um, definitely if you see pieces that have intellect and spirit on them uh, save them as a healing set right and there are there will be instances where you where you will be super low and if you have an add on like outfitter and you can just swap over to your spirit set real quick that's going to help boost your um, or reduce your out of combat you know regeneration time as you're moving from point A to point B so that's something that you might want to uh, keep in mind anyway. Uh, I've included a list of some noteworthy feral gear uh, or leveling gear, you know, Tunic of Westfall, Trip Runner Dungarees, Loxy's Training Stick, uh, Iron Shot Bludgeon, Mason's Fraternity R Ring, Wolf's Head Helm if you can get it, amazing for power shifting, um, that's kind of an iconic uh, druid item. There, if you can think of more stuff, definitely go ahead and comment on the presentation. I'd like to make this a more robust list, stuff that you, that you find along the way that's really helpful for druids. Um, again, this is kind of a living document, guys, so I hope we can all kind of come together and, and make this like the best resource it can be for the community. Um, you know, if you do, if you are going to go you know, feral DPS, you're going to go you chase that cat form dream, you can pick up devil sword gauntlets and leggings if you have the gold to support it. Uh, first aid, um, if you do decide to get first aid on a druid, it's not a super high priority. Here's a slide that shows where to get all your books and uh, get up to 300. And uh, that's it. Closing thoughts. Uh, the only closing thoughts to come to mind is just to really extend a big thank you to you guys. You know, I'm really starting to stream now and come out of my shell a bit. And you guys have been nothing but super kind and uh, supportive. So I really, really, really appreciate it. I never thought in a million years I could even, you know, have this limited amount of success that I'm having right now. So if you have any other questions, feel free to come in the Discord, ping me directly. I'll try and get you an answer. If I don't have an answer for you, I'll try and get in contact with someone who can, who, who does have an answer for you. Um, are you guys excited for, for Classic Man? The demo's coming out. I'm, I sure am excited. Uh, maybe comment down below if you you know what class you want to see next. Uh, follow, follow me on Twitch uh, if you can. I'm going to start streaming the demo and streaming Classic in general. So I'd really appreciate a follow on Twitch if you can. And uh, that's all for now, guys. So I'll see you in the next stream. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. I hope you have a wonderful day.